morning, Miss Brown. Mama, how do you do? I said, good morning, Miss Brown. Mama, how do you do? She said, I'm looking good and feeling fine, Mama. Man, how about you? But I'm feeling really good about it. <laughs> I feel really good about this show. Peter Dunn, what do you think? How are you feeling over there? Groovy, baby. Oh, that's what I wanted. Oh, wonderful groovy. stuff. Yeah, you guys feeling groovy? Yeah, thanks for coming. <laughs> See ya. It's a hell of a show, guys. Loved it. Loved it. So, no, uh, I don't know. I met uh, our, our guest tonight, in case you are just tuning in and you have to hear that wonderful, wonderful sound. Um, we've got. Kelly Pentico, who is a friend of mine uh, that I got to meet, I don't know, a while ago. Um, what was it? It's one of those jams that we did. Probably about that. It was the one we got thrown in jail. Uh, that was the one. No. Your Which one? Does. Which one? Yeah. Silly me. Yeah. And and Peter's got to know you as well through this. Yes. Yes. Very lucky to have uh, met Kelly, and uh, thank you for being so supportive of the show. Well, Peter, as I've told you before, I had satellite radio, but once I heard you, I, I haven't even, I don't use it when you're on the air. You're a heck of a, you're a heck of a DJ, you crack me up like you can't believe, and I enjoy the music you play, and other than that one thing about, you know, one of our Western heroes, you know, uh, that one <laughs> issue, which, you know, perhaps is which no would, rub. Maybe uh, there's no rub. I don't know. No, no, but, we'll, we'll you know, go through it. I, I, I think we want to address this right off the bat because there, there is a tension. It's, yeah, it's, things, things are tense. And there's tension. And Peter's been tense all day. I could tell. I listen on your show. Tension. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just, just let, oh, let me throw this out there here really quick. Look. Peter Peter Gunn has an issue with John Denver. It's out there. Boom. It's out there. I did not say that. JD. But, but he, Peter, being the open person he is, he's openly admitted. All the time. He has. Every day. Complete issues with the man. It's, and uh, I doubt if you ever met him. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> let me be the devil's advocate here and defend the man's. Yeah, from it, it, is it part of the 12 step, Peter? But you, you need to talk about it a lot. I'm well, willing to talk about it. I'm an open book. Uh, no, it, it it started as a joke actually. I years ago when I was growing up in England, we had a piano at our house, and the very first song that I learned on the piano was Annie's song by by John. And, and I've been uh, I've been bitter ever since. Uh, <laughs> Do you hate everyone named Annie too? I, I've uh, loved a few ladies named Annie. I've got no issue with the name. Just, uh. you know, I, I, I'm just going to jump in here. We've got uh, just a great show ahead of us. Um, again, Kelly Pentico, uh, he's a poet. He's a harp player. Uh, he, he's a gardener. He's, uh, he's a great guy. He's a gin man. And you just you can leave that there. And Harry O and playing guitar. Um, this is kind of a, a multimedia almost kind of deal. I've, I've been wanting to segue the written arts and the performing arts, and you are my segueer. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> segue away. That's huge. Did you ever work for the school district? Uh, uh, I went mind. to a school district. Do attended. Mind? Okay, so yeah. do you mind if I get right to the issue that we were talking about? Bring it. Bring it home. The John oh, Denver issue or, this, or the segue John issue? John Denver issue. Okay, so yes, I wrote please. this poem for Peter Gunn. Yes. In defense of, you know, one of our Western American hero champions, almost, you know, right? I, American hero. He's from Britain, and I mean, let's face it, they're sharp with the upper lip and all the other right. stuff, but, you know, they've got... Uh, it's still a little bit sore about that 1776 thing, I think. Yeah. What happened yes, there? Yeah, who knows? Those bright We're a nation coats, of bitterness. Those bright red coats are easy to shoot. I don't know what you were thinking there. Yeah, yeah, but and just as we just celebrated our nation's birthday, by the way, which was wonderful at Georgia's corner had a bunch of german guys that were there they like english guys we like english guys that sounds weird. i know <laughs> i think they like john denver too okay so only on fridays gordon <coughs> yeah. obviously gordon spreckens die deutsch you know uh, ich liebe dich so uh oh, even worse. that's i love you oh, okay. yeah oh. it just sounds bad so um well, kelly the, the bring only it. word in german i know is brazier 
Okay. <laughs> and stopping them flopping. <laughs> I think that's the FCC on the phone. Yes. <laughs> so, poem. Give us a poem. Okay, so I wrote this for Peter, and we're just going to go with it. And uh, John Denver fans out there, please, you know, punch the Facebook up on, you know, <laughs> Peter and rib him a little bit because he deserves it and he loves it. But, but be sure you like his page first before you rip. Yeah. Have you friended me on Facebook, Kelly, by the way? He's not on no, Facebook. No, I'm good with a hammer and chisel. <laughs> He's not on Facebook. That, I'm pretty useless. Yeah. Well, let's hear it. Let's okay, th this is a tribute to John Denver in honor of Peter Gunn. Yes. And it'll go like this with uh, someone's blessing. Oh. When John Denver died... When John Denver died, Colorado cried. They felt the country boy's pain. They cursed his experimental plane. They drank cores and got Rocky Mountain high. They all sang songs together and told stories of their champion. I remember the picture of him inside an album sleeve. He has this shirt on that said, be kind to nature. Kiss a beaver. He had a big smile. But I always wondered what his last words were. Was it, kiss me and smile for me? Tell me that you'll wait for me? Hold me like you'll never let me go? Or, there's a storm across the valley. Clouds are rolling in. Or maybe... You fill up my senses like a sleepy blue ocean. But he wasn't a swimmer. If he would have crashed in the mountains, he could have shape-shifted on impact and still be with us today, navigating the Rockies with nimble goat hoof. But he died in that sleepy blue. Maybe his words really were true. Good night, John boy. And smile for me and tell me that you'll wait for me Hold me like you never let me go That was a nice ode. Is that an ode? <laughs> God, he's well, breaking down. We might need a commercial break. Now, wait, wait, we don't do commercials. Does, his stiff upper lip is limbered up a bit. <laughs> right? I'm right? getting a little misty-eyed. Yeah, yeah. I love that. No, that was you know, beautiful. Listen, everybody out beautiful. there, wait, wait, listen. <laughs> okay, shh. We got a live show here. By the way, you can log in and see this live show, KTIM.org. You will see my friend Kelly Pentico, my friend Harry O, and my good friend Peter Gunn over there off to this side. Uh, so you did that just to rib Peter. Well, life's where you find it, you know. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I think the pinnacle of his career was perf performing with Kermit the Frog on the Muppets. <laughs> Yeah, that works for me. God <laughs> almighty. He was like a nature lover. He had, to, he had to be a frog. What did you want him to be? He was an experimental plane guy. He was... He was, uh, he was that didn't pan out he, so he well. Cool. Yeah, was <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, you know, others have sa maybe saved lives in other ways. Well, you know, I, I did hear one of his friends at the eulogy said, wake up and fly right. But I don't know <laughs> if that really had much bearing when so, he was in the coffin. So... So there, you know, we had some laughter but with John Denver wait, wait attached. Second, you We're know, not there. He died doing what he enjoyed doing. I wish we could all be there, you know. When it comes down to it, that's where I want to be. I want to be on stage somewhere in the middle of a lick, in the middle of a... <laughs> and, I'm, and gone. I tell you what, <laughs> either I... Either that or in the saddle, but we won't talk about that. The only thing that I don't <laughs> like about that, that analogy is in the event I'm behind you and I just hit the cymbal and it comes <laughs> sliding over and slices your head or so I don't want that I, I, at that point I really care 
Good point. <laughs> Just save the guitar when you fall. That's uh. Have you seen yeah. The yeah. No. Oh jeez. Uh, Got a crack then, on the bottom, yeah, everybody. The last thing I did at, at a friend's pool party was was reach over to shake somebody's hand. The strap came loose at the end of the night after all the carousing. I went like that and bang, it hit the cement. Big old gash on it, but that's why I buy a thirty-five. That's why I never greet anybody. I had a, I, that's I, why I buy a thirty-five dollar guitar to bang around with. I have a similar story uh, <laughs> involving my BMW motorcycle. That, oh, uh, did someone was greeting me. <laughs> they, were, they were going to greet me. And we just pulled over to greet me with a uh, a, a nice measure of uh, la fam la familia from uh, Cuervo Tequila. Oh. And uh, how can you say no? I reached over, got off my bike, and my bike fell behind me. Oh. That sounds like an untrained motorcycle to me. Right? We're talking expensive tequila. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 Who knows about wow. the bike? So, so you guys, uh, let's get back to the, the thing we're here. I, Kelly has, uh, Kelly and Harry have uh, become friends and done some performing at the Elks Lodge. Tell us about that gig. Go ahead, oh, Do I have to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what happened was I was invited by a friend of mine to come jam down at the Elks one afternoon. And what I didn't realize was when he said sit in, he meant play the gig. So I walked into this gig cold, and it went really, really well. And at the end of the, uh, the gig, we counted up our tips, and we split them, and we said, hey, let's keep doing this. And we've been doing it every Tuesday since then, from 1 to 4. Everybody's invited. Just come on yeah. down. And if you have an instrument, even better, because uh, we have some fellows that sit in, like Kelly comes every week and sits in. And we have a fellow by the name of Michael who sits in on keyboard. And we have a fellow by the name of Pat who comes by with his guitar. And anybody's welcome. You come sit in and hang out. It's a fun time, and they'll sponsor you up there. So it is a private club, but uh, it's a private club. These guys here are members. They'll sponsor you to come. Yeah, up. Yeah, you come yeah. up and you can um, be somebody's guest for the day, and uh, because you bring in an instrument or you came to listen to the music, they'll let you stay around for the day and uh, sign you up for the day, and that's not a problem at all. How about uh, I'd like to hear some more music, and um, sure, you know, I I don't know Kelly if you're prepared to. to go into yeah. kind of your background things like that but I'd, I'd like to hear a song throw another one down we're about 15 minutes into the show we've had one okay so if you uh, wouldn't mind yeah give us something else and uh, all right set it up the way you want it off, off we go <laughs> black woman from Africa. That's what DNA says. She was black. So now you got an excuse. You know what I mean. She was Swahili. I guess I'm a hillbilly Swahili. I got something in me. Exactly what you're thinking. Has this man been drinking? Oh, I'm telling you, it's DNA, man. That's hard to unprove. It's in your blood, just me and you. We got it all over us. We got even side. Sometimes we got evil. We can't hide. Thank you. 
believe. Read it in the paper. It's got to be true. It's got to even me and you. I don't want to talk about Adam. That's too big of a question right now. But I know Eve. And I believe. I got some of her and me. Easy to see, isn't it? good for you too because it's all true so it's time to get it together you know can't be a hater can't hate your great, 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 oh, great, grandma. She's all of ours. And she's born in Africa. That means the Garden of Eden wasn't on Mars. Got that wrong. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> I, uh, that was that was sweet, Harry. <laughs> yeah. That's the first time I heard it was this afternoon. I said, okay, yeah, we roll with that. We roll with that one. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've I've been talking to Kelly for months about about coming on the show and and um, you know, times were right, times weren't right, and I, I Kelly, yeah, walk me through this part. I I believe that for a period of time that you kind of had a little bit of a block. Is that writer's block, or you just weren't feeling the mojo, or what was the deal? Well, yeah, you can't. You get too happy, you can't write. You needed to get sad. You need a little pain. Amen. Yeah. You need a little yeah. pain to wheel it out there. You know, it's yeah. kind of a. It's something that pain evokes for me. You know, search searching in myself to wonder why and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Not not just my pain, but society's pain sometimes. You know. Yeah. I wrote a lot of poems during the, you know the the war that just are it's painful you know we got guys dying and uh we're yeah. sitting here trying to have fun and and what the hell are they dying for you know it that was a painful period for me yeah but i but i wrote a lot of stuff but it's all pretty hateful and mean so <laughs> yeah the the first time that he came over to my house peter um actually the first time he came over to my house i, I think i had uh, john delaney's father there and we were doing a jam and you had your books weren't planned on that so we set those aside did the jam, and then you could come back at a time where we didn't have the distraction. And you read, and you read, and you read, and you thumb through. I don't know, you've got uh, four or five books here. Hey, you had a mountain of books. You're, oh, yeah, I've got you're a writer. over 20. Hmm. And how about reading? Uh, usually, my experience, people that write usually read a lot. Yeah, I do. I don't have a TV, I read. And who inspires you, as a, from an author standpoint? Well, uh, probably multiple people, I guess. Oh, so many people! In fact, I get inspired by a lot of the local musicians here. When I go see them, I try to catch every one of them. It's always inspiring. Such they're out as? there, they're out there kicking it with all they got, you know. And it's it's you know like Audrey and Greg; those guys are awesome. And I mean everybody. I yeah. try to catch every act in town. I yeah. enjoy it. And it's wonderful because he gets to come out and see. I think, I, Peter, I think you've seen, uh, have you seen Kelly sit in with Audrey and Greg with uh, Beans and I Lewis? I have. Yeah. I have. I've had the uh, the pleasure of uh, seeing the man perform live with uh, Beans and Wheels. Spontaneous. I, I see you up uh, moving around in front of Soul What, in front of Dick Earl, um, you know, a lot of different performers. That's interesting that you get well, that. Well, e Eve was my, Eve was my great, 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 great grandmother and she liked to dance. Well, I've she got was black. that in me. It's all over me. She was black. And you're Irish. I love so that. So I've been told. Yeah. 
Well, I, you told me, so I've been told. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't, don't ever provoke my Irish, okay? <laughs> yeah, I told you so. You told me so. I think so, I did tell you that. So in case you just tuned in, we've got uh, Kelly Pinnico, we've got Harry O, two performers that uh, they're kind of getting this thing together, and I'm hoping this turns into something. Uh, just I love, Kelly, uh, your, your heart playing and your poetry, and Harry, you can play with anyone, anywhere, anytime. Give me a little bit of, uh, give me, a, yeah, uh, not no to say you're a slug. Give me, give me a little bit of your background here, because uh, I hear tales of New York. I hear tales of I Harlem. New York I, City and Harlem, and uh, I used to play guitar. That's what I did. I just played guitar on the street corner, on the, on a super across the street from where I, I lived, and uh, I ran into a bunch of people, and one thing led to another, and I ended up in a, an all-black minus me, um, R&B band back in the late 60s and started working in 1967, actually earning money as a musician, never looked back. Now that was after you were on the street, on the corner though, yeah, right? I, so I, I ran into so this one kid, his name was Albert, a tall skinny black kid, and we he'd have a guitar every once in a while and we'd sit and jam and one day he says, hey man, do you want to play guitar with my band? We just lost our lead guitar player. And I said, cool, yeah. And that Friday they came to pick me up for supposedly rehearsal, it was a gig in this warehouse district of. Yeah. Oh, it was in again. The Bronx. Again. Oh no, no. <laughs> I mean, these these guys came banging on my door. Open up. They're half hour late and say, "Come on, man, we're late." You Harry? And yeah. Then they yeah. asked afterwards, yeah. you Harry? Stylishly late. And my guitar and my amp by the door, and they snatched him and ran down the four flights of stairs. You and chased locked, them? Yeah, I locked the, uh, the apartment Wait. and went down after him, and I hopped into a, an old uh, 1967 uh, a line U-Haul uh, van, and there was wow. eight of us in there, including a Hammond organ and a, a Leslie Tone cabinet and nice. a PA system. We were all jammed in there, and it's the middle of the summer, and, and off to a gig we go, and we ended up in a warehouse district, and there wasn't a soul on on the street I was scared to death you know they're gonna find my body tomorrow yeah you know? yeah they, you just ran it they grabbed your guitar and your amp and, and ran, ran and, and you and followed ran, them and I went with them and right and, and you I jumped up, in with them I end up at the speakeasy in huh. this warehouse district and it's nothing but black lights on in there and I'm the palest thing in the room wow and and my friend says, just follow my fingers, and you play the same chords. And, you and when live. I nod, you solo, and when I nod again, you stop soloing. And at the end of the first set, I bellied up to the bar, and my hands were shaking by this time. And oh, I man. ordered a beer, and the guy next to me, big tall black dude, slaps me on the back. He said, boy, are you good. Let me get you that beer. And the rest is history. That's you know, sweet. I, after that, oh, that is a wonderful oh, no, story, I mean, isn't it? I'll tell you what. This, he has. Shooting, he can do this I all day. Working, I can do this all day. This yeah. is why I do, I do this. These stories. Than I, play. Yeah. I tell stories. I'll tell you what. I was working a summer gig in Wall Street at the time. I put in forty hours a week. I was low man on a totem pole. It, I was miserable, absolutely miserable. These guys came along and offered me this gig. I used to make sixty-eight dollars a week take-home pay from a Wall week. Street. And this guy paid me fifty dollars at the end of the night. He says, "Hey, baby, you want to do it tomorrow?" I said, "Yes." Yeah. <laughs> Monday morning. Yeah. Monday yeah. morning came in. I put in my two weeks' notice. Yeah. That was it. That was history. That was history. So you were at sixty-eight a week, working a regular working job. Working a regular job back in the day. Oh, uh, I get it. An hour was minimum wage. So wow. after forty, after forty weeks, you'd look at sixty-eight dollars. That's that's what your take home was. Yo, and sweet. these guys handed me a fifty dollars that night. They had fifty dollars and asked me if I wanted to do it again tomorrow. I said, hell yeah, yeah, yeah. And I worked for a year and a half with those guys, wow. and we had a great damn time. Wow, great time. You know, I am really looking forward to Saturday night. Me uh, too. We've got you playing at George's Corner Restaurant. I'm so happy. Sponsor of. Peter Gunn Show. Peter Gunn Show. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Yo. <laughs> Two West St. George Boulevard, number one. Yeah. Any Being questions? sure to be sunny St. George. Yeah, 8 to 11. Harry yes. will be performing. And uh, you're going to perform, you know, I, I, I call him. I said, what, what, how do I build this? What genre are you? What are you going to play? What kind of style? Yeah, yeah. I do 50s. Yeah. I do 60s. Yeah. I do blues. I do... You name it, I've done it. You know, I just I yeah. play all styles of music. I just being a, a sorry guys, being a full time musician means being versatile. You can't be a what trick pony. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to eat, you have to be able to play whatever they want. Let's go. So and it, and, and it I was did and I did in 1978. I went on the road, and I hit the Holiday Inn circuit, and I was on that circuit for 14 years. And I'll tell you, I worked from 48 to 51 weeks a year. 
Wow. Six nights a week, two weeks of this holiday in, two weeks of that, two weeks of the next one, and that's what I did. And it wasn't the music I wanted to play, but how many other cats were earning a living playing their instrument? Huh? Um, yeah. Living yeah. Yep. And living that's in a right. hotel. You get you there, and you outside. have your telephone, and you have your room service, and somebody makes your bed, you know, just like mommy uh, used to do, and uh, the whole nine yards, man. Your mom left a mint on the pillow? <laughs> yes, <Sweet>. she did. <laughs> Kelly, how did you meet this guy? How did you guys hook up? What? what uh, well, I, I went up to the Elks Lodge to see music, and uh, he was up there playing. Yeah. And I... Uh, Oh, sorry. It's my heart. Um, he was up there playing and enjoyed his music and yeah. introduced myself. And I, I knew Bob Nolan, the guy that yep. he plays with. Bob, Bob. Bob's a, a bass player in town. Bob's a great guy. He was playing with Bob up there. And uh, until Harry got there, Bob was uh, singing, had a little drum machine going, and did his own little thing there. And he did pretty good. He's a country guy. Yep. But when he met when he met uh, Harry, you know, the whole he set kind of changed. Scene. But um, they invited me to come back and play, so I went and played with them. And then uh, a couple of times, Harry and his wife would come stay at my house, and you know we really have a fun time then. Well, and, oh, and, and, like and you know, oh, let me yeah. let me uh, let me yeah. make a little reference there because uh, uh, Harry, so you, you, you live you live in Mesquite, I believe. Is I that right? I'm living in Mesquite, and actually in Beaver Dam, because the wife uh, works in Mesquite, and um, now she got a job over in Hurricane, so we've moved. We're local now. Practically. They're Utahns. <laughs> well, Utahns. Utahns. Utahns? Is that it? I don't know how I say it. <laughs> Utahns. 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 Well, Utahns. In, in Idaho, they call us carrot snappers. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> carrot hey, snappers. Well, I don't know why. <laughs> Is that because of the red hair? But you know the only good thing to ever come out of Idaho, right? Uh, it, Interstate 15. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, do you, Kelly, have, a, the, do you have a... Personal favorite of uh, music genre that you like to perform? You, you said that you, you you try to be as versatile as you can, but is there a particular genre that that when you're up on stage you think, yeah, this is what I? I always fall back on the blues. Always fall back on the blues. That's, Amen. That is that's where it all comes from, and 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 in fact, uh, Kelly lent me this uh, Ken Burns um, uh, thing on jazz. This 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 series that Ken Burns did, and of course they they. They seconded that. The fact of the matter is, um, blues was there, and uh, blues was a, a compilation of uh, a combination, I should say, of folk songs, work songs, and and gospel, and that's how blues came about. And then it got incorporated into jazz in New Orleans back in the day. So I mean, I loved playing the jazz things, you know. I love that stuff, but when it comes down to it, really grabs me. Mm -hmm. That's what really grabs me. When I hear little Jimmy Reed, as I was in a in a in a blues band in Milwaukee a gazillion years ago, and uh, the keyboard player would say Harry, ha Harry, because he had he had a, he had a little speech impairment, so he'd say ha Harry, give me a little Jimmy Reed background. And I said. That's it, Harry. That's it. That's it. You got it. And then he started doing the song. <laughs> and, you know, and I, 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 uh, I watched Kelly as you did that, and his leg jerked, yeah. and exactly. he went to stand up. That's called a leg jerk reaction. Instead of a knee jerk, <laughs> yeah. And it's and a nervous you disorder. You immediately reached for your harp, yeah. and oh, oh. Speaking of which, um. Oh, I, huge, huge apologies I need to extend forth to uh, Bob Patterson. Bob has the morning show. Um, I had just indicated that our guest was Kelly Pentico and Harry O, and Kelly was a harp player, and Harry was uh, was going to play guitar. Well, a lot of people don't realize that, that uh, we refer to harmonica players as harp players, and so um, he was thinking literal, a harp player. And Kelly being a name that is male or female, well. I heard him today. He, Bob, I am so sorry. It was wonderful how he worked out this scenario about a woman bringing in a harp. <laughs> Well, Harry played guitar, and you mean and there isn't one? Yeah. Like, what is she gonna be? yeah. That's hey. why we have all these people here. Kelly. Oh. <laughs> We're all hey, expecting. Give, 
get Bob on the decaf at Rosalind's Cafe, all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, eat, he's <laughs> eating the hash. Bob, Bob, Bob I, yeah, Bob, I'm sorry about that. So, yeah, I did send him a text and said, oh, sorry, by the way. Oops. He's never been so, so excited in his life. Yeah, he was going to stay all day. He's, he's waiting for he's waiting for the harp player, the female harp player. You know, I'm waiting for the for a, a little harp myself. Aren't we all? Uh, give, yeah, right. Well, but did you? Um, love it if you guys would play something else okay. for us. C- can I read one more poem? I'd love that even okay. more. Okay, because this this is going to touch a heart string to anybody that's ever been to a liquor store in their life. Oh, Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> you are listening again to uh, The Scene with Kelly Pentico. You can log in KTIM.org to watch this. And uh, Kelly, bring the mayhem. Okay. Uh, is this a liquor store just in Utah? Oh, yeah. You're going yeah, to know which one different. it is. You're going to know which one it is. Yeah, but You've I mean, outside there. the state, it, you, just, you probably don't have this drama. So, okay. No, no, no. Okay, no, no, bring it. No. Bring it. It's The it's Department of Alcohol and Beverage condition. Control, we love you. Um, <clears throat> There's a liquor store I pass when I travel I-15. It's the loneliest place I've ever seen. (laughs) It looks closed, but the red sign says, otherwise. (laughs) I ponder the feelings of all that lonely booze when surrounded by people that can't handle the truth. A cold, lonely soldier needs someone to care for him. In Utah, it's out of sight, out of your mind. It's location, location, location. Doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. I guess the truth is somewhere between a lonely liquor store and a completely lost doctrine. So give me a drink. If that don't fix me, call me a good doctrine. If there's one in in town, please check the lost and found. Yeah, yeah, that that would be off I-15 by Hurricane, where it's con- found, it's yes, inconveniently located for everybody, found, everybody. I had to find the liquor store, and I pulled into the Texaco, yeah. and the gal in there gave me a hard time. I mean, she was good natured, but she gave me a hard time. And finally, she she says, "Come here, honey." And she said, pointed out the window, and says, "See that building over there?" Yeah. She says, "That's the liquor store." I got there, huge liquor store, huge parking lot, not one car in the parking lot. And I walked in, and two gals behind the counter, and I said, "Damn, this place is quiet!" And they started laughing. And of course, I found my liquor right by the front door. I grabbed it and I left. I was gone in two minutes, and they were alone again. The finest <laughs> box of wine available. You, you know, it's it's. It, I I don't know. They're smarter brains than mine at work here on the the division of alcohol and I beverage control. No why why they're in the middle of nowhere, I don't perfectly know. Perfectly good town, right? Five miles down the road is a perfectly good town, and they can say it's the Hurricane Liquor Store. No, they have it out on the highway, so that you can pick up liquor and drive. Hmm. But nobody knows it's nobody knows it's there. There's not a sign. So so you just drive by and you see the sign that says otherwise, uh, and indicates that it's there. Yeah. Amazing place. Anyway, what you got there, give us some music. Yeah, let's do something. This is KTIM, the scene, ninety-five point three. We have Kelly Pentico. We have Harry O. Harry will be performing this Saturday night at George's Corner Restaurant from eight to eleven, and Kelly will probably be joining him at some point in time throughout the night. If, if my not, pro- if my probation officer allows it. Well, if Harry doesn't let him, let's turn off his guitar right well, now. Well, you know, Peter said he's going to be there, and and uh, Peter just, is your probation. Just I mean, remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peter, I mean nothing. <laughs> Peter, if you're going to take your gun to town, take it to George's. Okay, that's the only place you're safe. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got? Ready? Yep. Start something up, and we'll see what I got. <clears throat> Oh, 
you out there that got a little uh, culinary bone in you? You get real picky when you get in the kitchen? Now, when somebody comes in your kitchen and they're doing the cooking, and you don't like the way they're doing the cooking, you just gotta say something. Gotta say something. Well, something's gonna burn. You say, ho! I like to cook slow. Yeah, I like to cook slow. But there's this girl I know, and boy, she likes everything hot. Boy, she cooks it on high. Wow. You should see how those eggs fry. Oh. That gal can fry an egg, and baby, it don't take long. Yolk and everything. In a second. She cooks it fast. She's always cooking on high. And I said, baby, simmer down. Simmer down a little bit. You're making me cry. You gotta go slow. Why you wanna go like that? You're gonna burn the pan! I said, baby. That's just a little hot. I'm sweating in here. You got to turn it down. You make everything tough that way when you cook too fast. There's a setting on low, and that's where I want to go. I want to go low. Don't you know? Nice. That was cool. I am so hungry right now. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take some time. <laughs> That's right. It's slow, baby. Cooking it's slow. Cooking it slow. She charges by the hour. <laughs> That's not a short order cook. <laughs> you know, it gets paid by the, uh, by the plate that's put out. Uh. Anyway, sorry about that. But anyway. <laughs> Everyone's so, gladder when their platter's fatter. That's that's your mic, by the way. We we did a little switcheroo, so okay. Um, let's let's drop that down a little bit. Yeah, get it low. Right, there you go. There you go. Wow. This is yeah. This is some bad evidence. If there's a picture taken of this. Well, and we are uh, streaming live. By the way, you can log in and watch this the last 17 minutes. Uh, KTM.org. Again, Kelly Pinto, here you uh, Here's what I th think I know about what you guys are doing here. It, it's almost all impromptu. Isn't that what you liked? I love that. Well, I love that. But people listen to this, especially when you nail an ending like that, and they're just listening and they're going, "Wow, yeah, you know, they're counting out measures," and you know, no, no, it's a look, it's a little cue, it's a bam. It's and a feel. It, I was clicking fingers and I missed the I missed the cue. <laughs> Help the brother out. 
what I'm saying, Kelly. <laughs> Ask Eve for help. She's got rhythm. <laughs> 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 Peter, is this living up to your expectations? Because we've and been excited some. about this, right? He, no, the guy I, is speechless. He can never recover. be speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard uh, of this I do quite have one ever. Question. Uh oh. Um, Gordon and I were discussing this yesterday, and neither of us could come up with the answer. What's the official term for a harp player? Is it a harpist? Yes. Uh, a harpist. Harpist. All right. Now I know everything. But is, is that also someone who plays the actual harp itself, not a harmonica? Peter said one question. That was his question. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, didn't limit, I didn't limit my questions. In fact, Scott might have a question, too. I don't know. Scott, think of something, and uh, I'll bring you into this. Where do babies so, come from? Yeah, that was Tim. That's a long harp story. Harp players. Yeah. Uh, that's what they harp call players. a harpist. Yeah, that's right, a harpist. There's and the girl, that he's with, the girl that he's with is a harpy. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time. And he's the harper. So, Let's not harp on yeah. the issue. Yeah, right? So, uh, no, this is, this is just really cool. And I, you know, Harry, how long have you been playing? It, oh, 63. That's, uh, yeah, it's that's a, a few years. years. Yeah, yes. A couple of years. That's wonderful because you just have this ingrained. I mean, you know, it just, oh, yeah. it just happens. It's, I, well, it's there. Know, music, I mean, grabbed me by the, the short ones back when I was five years old. I just, I'd hear music and it'd just drive me crazy. And I'd say, I got to get me some of that, whatever it is. And I was, I was talking to my wife last night, and I was talking about the old Andy Griffith show. Does anybody remember yep. how much music there was on that show? Yep. And, you know, there, there, there'd be close-ups on this guy. On this one episode, there was a close-up on a guy just playing all by himself. He's just playing the heck out of his guitar. That was actually Al Keola, great session player from L.A. back in the day. And, I, I mean... The music that was coming out of that one guitar just like inspired the hell out of me. And then when I got a chance to get a guitar, I jumped all over it. Jumped all over that. Did you hurt the guitar? We hmm. didn't get some of it. Yeah, we don't it. Yes, I did. Yeah, I jumped all over it. I'll tell you what happened. I, I told my dad, I said, Dad, I was 13. I said, Dad, I want to play guitar. And he said, Okay. And he walked away. I said, Dad, that means I need a guitar. He says, Uh huh. And he walked away. I said, Dad, <laughs> Come on, I, I, I got to get a guitar. And he says, well, do you want a job? And he gave me a job. And I worked that whole summer. I was 14 years old. Yeah, I was 14 years old when I, when I got my first real good guitar. And um, I worked all summer in his factory. He, he, made, um, he made costume jewelry. And I worked over this melted metal. I would pour this hot metal into these casting machines. And it was 98 degrees, and it was New York City, so it was humid. And I did that all summer long, and at the end of the summer, I had $148 saved up. And we went to 48th Street and bought a Fender guitar for me. Oh, nice. And I'll tell you what, I learned to play that son of a gun because nobody yeah. gave it to me. Yeah. I worked to get that damn thing, and yeah. I was going to learn to play it. It wasn't going to be a two-week, oh, I don't feel like it. I stuff. Everyone... No, I learned to play it, and I spent 8 to 13 hours on it. I drove my folks crazy. Yeah. Drove them nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But years later, they were happy when they'd fly out to wherever I was playing at the holidays. That's yeah. my son up there. That's yeah. my son, you know. <laughs> they That's didn't talk about all the times they, they tried to discourage me from being a musician. They didn't talk about all of that. My dad said, why don't you join the business, you know, come and work with me. And when you get some money, you can do what you want to do. I said, ah, 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 nah, nah. why don't I do what I want to do now? And if it doesn't work out, I can always get a job. Yeah. When yeah. when you're uh, out touring and you're and you're doing the Holiday Inn thing, you 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 were saying earlier that you you like to be as diverse as possible. Is there any music style that you won't touch? That you uh, just like? Do you know any Nickelback? Yes. I, well, well I, I don't know any just because I haven't been exposed to it because I stopped listening to the radio. I'm sorry, guys. That, that was a gazillion a, that was years ago. I stopped listening Peter. to commercial radio. I just can't do it. I cannot listen to commercial radio, so I just don't listen to radio. Uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. But I, but commercial I originally free. said I stopped listening to radio. <laughs> and yeah, and you know, and it's because commercial radio was just driving me nuts. I'd yep. hear all the stuff too. that was regurgitated other people's music, and then people talking trash talking over it and they call that music and to me it's not music it has not doesn't even have a semblance of music so i just stopped listening to the commercial music altogether and i i go online and i pull up artists that i've heard the names of and i listen to them and i watch youtube videos of them and that's how i i roll 
Kelly, what what got you into? What's your musical upbringing? Where did you someday say, you know, I want to uh, want to play the harp? Why, where did you get into? You got sucked into, not sucked in, introduced into the blues, <laughs> not sucked in, definitely not sucked in. Well, I, I think I bought my har- first harmonica in about 1985, but it just sat. Uh, actually, I uh, I worked in. Uh, I had a job in Hawaii, and three of the dudes on our our crew were in this really hot band over there. So we'd finish the day, and in Hawaii, you just back then, you just went to a pavilion, maybe bought a little beer, and everybody played guitar and sang, and like, I'm going to play this song, everybody sang along and all that stuff. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I bought a harp so I could kind of join in. And then I, one of the guys, I got a job in California, so he flew over there for the next job, and I really got to know him real well, and, and he was really, really good. He played this, uh, you know, uh, Hawaiian slack key style and uh, wrote a bunch of his own tunes. And actually, I, because I write, I, I wrote a bunch of tunes with him, actually. Um, but I always wanted to play, and I had some physical maladies, and I was home a lot, so I decided I'd get more into it and studied a little bit and tried. Uh, actually, I, I started playing with a, a gentleman named Mike Schertz, who was actually, for old timers around here, he's quite a legend. He's a heck of a guitarist. and. Uh, he did mostly country, but he could pretty much do anything. He seemed like he knew about 6,000 songs. But So I played along with him, and then I just started playing more and trying harder and uh, getting more people to play with and trying to work on Excuse my... Excuse me, Kelly, is that the mic that, that used to play with Bob? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I Mike was you. a great guitar picker. He's awesome. So anyway, I just kind of, kind of evolved from that. And uh, Peter and I, we, we were also talking the other day about the differences in harmonicas. You know, uh, I, I didn't realize uh, until I saw you perform uh, at George's that uh, the harmonicas were in different keys. I thought you uh, just did that as part of the playing switch from key to key, but you actually have harmonicas in specific... Well, you, you've either got to play in the key, which you play in a lot of country songs, but in rock, rock and roll, they call it cross harping, and you're four keys up. So if you're playing, say, for instance, a G, you go, you know, G, E. I mean, it's four keys G, above a. it, so you're actually playing a C. You're playing a C harp, right, and yeah, you cross harp G, it. A, and the same in blues, too. You, right. you do the same in blues. And, and what that is, because you get, more, you get more intonation on your draw chord. So that's what the draw chord coordinates. Right? And you end up with these notes. Which is a pentatonic yeah, scale, which yeah. is a blues scale. And that works across rock and roll, too. Now, as somebody who enjoys the occasional non-filter granola bar, uh, <laughs> is, um, is uh, the harmonica is something that I'm going to struggle with if my lung capacity isn't quite where it could be? Or Well, actually, you can play it soft and get a lot of effect. It's not, it's not how much you draw, but uh, if you have the capacity for air, it's just like any read an instrument you're going to be able to uh, have more you know sustain a note longer or something like that but the actual fact is with a harmonica to play it you do have to get your the timing of just breathing is really yeah you know yeah. if you're jamming in a song especially if you're singing you still got to allow like a, a pause for a breath somewhere and may, maybe you'll be a hair late when you're supposed to hit it right there you know and but uh and- and the difference between metal harmonicas and plastic harmonicas. That was another thing that we had. Well, there's wood body p- harmonicas, you know, and that seems to be what all the purists play is a wood body one. I, I play wood bodies most of the time, but I like plastic harp too, you know. I mean, it's. How does the, the, the sound differ from a plastic to a wood body and, or metal? Well, to me, it's the key, but uh, uh, the, the wood body is just a little more mellow sound. But the. Most of the good uh, blues harps are plastic bodied harps, the ones that they advertise as blues harps. Yeah. And the wood harps are more, you know, marine band type harps, but it gets a mellow sound, but you've got to, all of them are a little bit different on how you bend them and, and the sound they get, a little bit. Well, we, uh, uh, we have time probably for another jam, another yeah. song. This, is, this hour has gone by way too fast. Yeah. Do, you, do you want me to read one more poem? I would love to do that. One yeah, more read, read, and then uh, play something. Right. Absolutely. Who is your favorite poet, by the way? Um, do you have one? I'm kind of partial to Oscar Wilde, but he wasn't really. A, he, he wrote some poems, but that wasn't his forte. 
Okay. But yeah, a lot of English poetry has been okay. is something I read. I got a lot of poetry books. I okay. enjoy reading it. All right. Okay, this is called uh, this is called flippers. I'm surrounded by flippers. Little buttons I can't always read or see unless I'm huddled in the crotch of the laziest tree. Flippers, handheld gadgets and machines. I guess little numbers and letters and pound signs make the world twirl. Little pianos professing your mind's melodies, fingers on your heart. Typing some exacting brief message to freedom, happiness, or the chance of art. Flippers, buttons to the infinite. A flipper is shaking in my hand. The world is at my command. And then the power goes out. I could talk to you on the cosmos things that science proclaims, but I'm lost, my flippers. I could tell you that Samaria was one of the civilizations riding in the three speed of humanity, cuddled in an Easter basket, waiting to be planted and thrive. But I lost my flipper. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, you know, just the, uh, the you just paint the the whole image, the Easter basket, the cuddled thing. I like it. I like it a lot. So, um, thank you, and definitely want another song. And um, just want to just want to say something really quick. Um, we want to send out our, uh, our our best wishes uh, to Audrey Sizemore's daughter, who was involved in an accident in Las Vegas. She's uh, healing up in a hospital there auto pedestrian kind of thing so we want to send out best wishes to her yes. um best wishes to my mother who's having a tough time and uh, i want to say hello to my sister sandra who's watching us in atlanta tonight so i don't know that it has to be that sad though that's sweet give us something this is kelly pentaco this is harry o harry will be playing at george's this saturday 8 to 11 Kelly will probably be joining him. KTIM 95.3. Time, 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 time again I try To tell you just how, just how I feel deep down inside But it just ain't no use I know now, just never gonna understand But just one moment, you could stand in my shoes Then and only then, babe, do you know how it hurts to lose you But it just ain't no use I know now, you're just never gonna understand Thoughts of you Still crowd my mind When well, it's getting late And I'm all alone So I'll sit back baby Drink this old Bottle of wine and Get to sleep By getting Stoned Here I am baby I'm just Trying Gotta admit, love, seems you still got a hold on me. No matter what I say, no matter what I do, I'm still in love with you. Oh, I'm gonna say that thing.
Thoughts of you still crowd my mind It's getting late and I'm all alone I'll sit back, baby, drink this old bottle of wine He can get to sleep by getting stoned Here I am, baby, I'm just trying to be free Got a middle of seems you still got a hold on me No matter what I say, no matter what I do I'm still in love with you Well, I thank you. That is very nice. Very, very nice. good. Very nice. I like Just that. Turning the scene yeah. on its head tonight. Very cool. This is lovely. This is just kind of what I had in mind, man. So uh, where, where is everybody playing then? Uh? Yeah, this Saturday, Harry O at George's Corner Restaurant, 8 to 11, no cover charge. Awesome. Wonderful food. Yep. Full bar. Right on. Great food. Um, tonight, George's Corner Restaurant is the idols which is three-fourths of so what oh wow yeah yeah susan crisp on drums mike Moulton on guitar and vocals and elaine stoddard on bass and vocals very cool yeah so and next week what do we got coming up on the scene or is that to be announced tba to all be right all right too big to, 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 to be announced to be announced it's a little bit too big to uh, talk about right oh, now. oh yeah yeah it's big all right all right we'll just leave it at that Jim, right. it's great to have you back oh it's great to be back I want to say thanks to uh, Scott Mickelson for helping us with the video tonight. Director, shout producer out to his dad, the scene. Charlie Mickelson. Yeah. Yep. Ryan Adams in, in the house. In the house. Come and join us at George's. All right. That's going to do it. It's the scene on 95.3 KTIM. KTIM is community. 95.3 FM. George's Cafe and George. Pub in Historic Ancestor Square at the heart of downtown St. George.